Welcome to the OFX Podcast. I'm Dave Claxton, and along with me, as always, is my killer commentary counterpart, Bethany McChesney. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, well, you know, it was your first time. Well, so, all right, so uh, those of you who haven't seen, check it out, OCR Report, for the uh, previous DECA race, DECA SoCal, DECA Fit SoCal. Uh, Bethany and I did commentary together. It was your first time. So first off, how awkward did it feel? So, yeah, the awkward part was, and if you've never done this side of things, is there's a lot of background stuff that's going on, and so you kind of have to shut it off. So I know at the beginning, um, the background noise would distract me, and there was a couple of times where I stopped talking, because I was like, I don't know if people are hearing what I'm hearing. (laughs) And... uh, yeah, so then I realized that a lot the background noise everybody doesn't hear, just me. So um, yeah, it took a little bit, and I think someone with severe ADHD would have a really hard time like shutting out. And you have these different screens going on on this side, and then this thing that you're focusing on over here, and then different people talking in the background. And yeah, it was interesting, but I I had a really good time though. I enjoyed it a lot. So it was still good, and you did get thrown in pretty early. I mean, I managed to ask you like two days before or something like that so it was you, yeah. you got thrown in pretty good so you're good to step up and um it's hard you always you always pick yourself apart after like I do immediately it was done I was like oh I suck <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's always that way and for me and I've said this before doing it remotely is one thing it's okay but it is so hard to translate the excitement of doing it right on the floor there and when I've done the commentary right on the floor like when I did for worlds and did for Chicago it was such a vibe and I was so into it and you just can't can't fake that emotion because it will come off as fake if you fake it. I mean, the, the fact too, that this was a bit of a runaway race, um, yeah. you know, takes away from a little bit, sadly with Ryland not showing up, but yeah, it's, it's definitely an art. It's a skill. It's, it's difficult to do. And um, I look forward to um what's 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 the first one north carolina where i will get to do it on the floor and right. same with uh the northeast one in uh near near pittsburgh near philadelphia i'll get to do that one on the floor too and worlds so I look forward to that that'll be a different a different vibe a different feel but uh thank you for ocr report for putting those on check them out on youtube and you can see watch the whole thing and uh you can see some great performances from ryan kent and lauren weeks for sure mm-hmm. Um, and make sure that again, like we we have a sport too where it's not very it's not always very public. So if you want, if you enjoy and you want to see more live feeds, go and support OCR Report. They're doing an amazing job, and Dave and I have worked for them a couple times now, and they really do. And uh, Jason Dupree, they do such a good job. So go and support them. Uh, their membership is it's like five dollars a month. And again, if you want our sport to grow and gain more coverage, go and support them and become a no Sarah report member yeah i mean just if you want to see some cool events because they're doing the savages they're doing the decas mm-hmm. they're doing a lot of stuff so yeah it's it's a good idea um what, what did we want to move on to next there was a high rocks in hamburg uh, no changes in the uh, elite 15 yeah. um still a great race good another great high rocks presentation but really i i didn't even see a stream of it so i don't know if there was one so i really don't have to tell you about there um we want to talk about a personal vendetta. Very angry. Very, very angry. <laughs> so uh, local DECA gym owners, uh, Amber and Zach Tate, uh, they went down and went down to Underdog Fitness Bubbles Gym, and they ran a DECA mile relay, and they beat our time. Mm-hmm. This is unacceptable. <laughs> yeah, about 20 seconds faster than us. <laughs> this is unacceptable. We will not stand for it. We will not stand <laughs> idly by, um, and we will... We'll get, we'll rally our troops, we will train, we'll be ready, and we will see them in San Antonio to go head to head, which congratulations, you guys are awesome. And you guys had a great run. And we really, really do look forward to going to head head. I think we're going to have a great battle and push each other to PRs galore and hopefully podiums. So that will be awesome. Congrats. (laughs) Yes, yes. And I'm going to put down a bike like you wouldn't believe. So Zach, get ready. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, it's going to be awesome. I had just one more thing, and then we'll get to our guest. Um, we have a great guest, Ryan Kempson. Um, I wanted to announce that as part of Obstacle Sports Canada, we have now opened for applications for Team Canada to represent us at the Belgium World Championships. Um, 
And yeah, so we're taking applications. You can go to obstaclesportscanada.ca. You can go to their our Instagram page, Obstacle Sports Canada. You can send me a message, whatever you want. We'll hook you up. And then you go to the page, you fill out an application. So people like in the US, USA OCR, and we'll we talk about this later on with, with Ryan, is doing a process where they're having a point system for different races. We don't really have the luxury to do that right now because one, we don't have enough races in Canada to warrant points and it could end up being a very odd team that is just based on participation. And well, quite frankly, for the elites, we don't want that. We want elites. We want to send our best. That's the point of a team Canada. So it's an application process. You're essentially going to fill out some of the races you've done, some of your highlights, and it's also for age groups. So there's also age group spots. So there's 100 meter, a 3k, a 1500 meter spots for elite spots for age group. Um, fill out the application if you have any questions it's very simple it's all online click 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 you, it, it couldn't be more easy so if you have any questions reach out let me know i'll be glad to answer them um and even if like if even if you don't think you qualify fill an application anyway you never know i mean this is this is going to belgium so some of those age groups might remain empty right you, you don't know if you if you if you want to go over their race give it a shot worst case you don't make the team it's not a big deal so Bethany, I expect your application in tomorrow. And um, <laughs> yeah, I, so here, I'm going to put an application. I'm going to put an age group application. However, there is a, a, an asterisk with mine that I will only put myself on the team if the team is not full. So for my age division, I will only jump in if there is an extra spot available. Otherwise, that's a bit of a conflict of interest there, no matter how good or may, you may or may not have done. <laughs> so definitely that'll be a thing and uh ninjas 100 meter ocr yeah take a look at it okay this is good for you there we, we also will eventually be having a ninja team candidate as well mm -hmm. but for this i mean right now one of the best 100 meter ocr guys out there is um uh, oh my god i gapped on his name the weatherman joe morovsky oh yeah so he's uh you know constantly winning the ocrwc uh, adventures ocrwc so yeah, take a look at the ninjas. It's worth it. It's a lot of fun. That said, Beth, I want to jump right in. We'll go mm -hmm. right to Ryan Kempson. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to stammer with some kind of introduction. So here we go. Ryan Kempson. All right. All right. First off, um, we're here with Ryan Kempson. And the first question is, what the hell are we building now? Uh, how do I do this? I'm replacing <laughs> a bullet in my chainsaw. I was, oh. uh, <laughs> this happened... Uh, probably six months ago, did something, didn't realize it, and thought I just like didn't sharpen the blade, and it's just taking forever to cut through these logs. And I was like, man, like I just I gotta stop and I finally sharpened it. I still I'm talking like I cut about a quarter way through a you know foot diameter tree, and it just would would spin in place. It was like a car on ice. I, I just couldn't figure it out, and finally I started like twisting the saw and it would cut through it like butter. I'm like, what? And I realized when I was cutting down a tree, I left the saw in and I literally bent the, the bar for it. So the <laughs> chain was like off by like a millimeter. And so, and then all my cuts would be like swooped. And then I'd go like, and so now I have these swoop logs that I would try to split for firewood and family camp and stuff. So the log would be like tilting over. I'm trying to cut it. <laughs> So yeah. you, you, you're like the real guy. You're not like Hunter McIntyre's, you know, fake lumberjack and you're doing the real thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, real thing. Real thing. Cool, man. Uh, so, I mean, excited to talk to you. Uh, recent yeah. Savage winner, last year's series winner. Yeah. Um, lots of cool stuff going on. So why don't we start with just with last, last weekend's race, which... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so run us through last weekend's week race was in Georgia. Um, that in Georgia, just happens, yeah, happens to be the only Savage yeah. course I've been on. <laughs> oh, okay, so you're familiar with it. That's good. Yep. Um, so you'll know what I'm talking about because that's one thing I really wanted to share with everybody is a lot of these the, the live feeds with Savage are getting better, um, quality is getting better, but traditionally when they follow everybody around on the carts, it's it's typically everybody sees the wide open running in the fields, whether it's at wedding venues or equestrian farms or just farms in general. And um, 
a lot of people think that Savage is just flat, really fast courses, and it's not the case at all. <laughs> so Georgia is very punchy, um, up and down, and uh, th- that past weekend, it a huge rainstorm had rolled in for like a couple of hours the night before. Um, so they delayed the start to 10 a.m., which was really nice. <laughs> it's, it's nice having that extra sleep. But um, – the course itself, it's always really muddy, but you're going like it, it's steep enough where you have to power hike a lot of things, like just real punchy. But there's this whole network of, uh, I guess, you, not streams, but like creeks that wind in and out and everything. And creeks enough that like it's like a two or three foot like sharp embankment down and almost like a small cliff going back up. So the running was extremely, extremely um, fatiguing. You know, you just, you had to constantly jump over things. Um, all the descents, it was, there was leaves. So your feet stuck to the ground, but like, if you go to change direction, they would just go out from underneath you. So it was like that you couldn't go slow because you couldn't put the brakes on, but you had to try to control yourself and grab the trees and turn. So it was um, as, as technical as it comes. Yeah. And, and that's like your jam, right? You're, you're, you're noted for the, the East coast stuff and the, and the, you know, the difficult terrain. What did, what did, what was it? Uh, Robert said this weekend, nobody's faster through the woods than Ryan Kempson. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, you know, I just grew up in it, and all the races I've I've partaken in um, out on the East Coast. That's just what the train is. You know, the same as you go to the West Coast, and uh, the runners out there are very good at you know switchback manicured trails and, and maintaining um, maintaining cadence and tempo and uh, just staying in a groove, um, which is completely opposite of what it is out in the East coast, you know, it's, uh, you always, um, you always have to be thinking about what you're attacking in that moment. And if you, if you don't just keep tacking the train and, and let it, and let it dictate what you're doing, you just, you're going to lose time eventually. So you're what are the dominating lead in the Savage series of one point. <laughs> that's the way they work right I, i'm not i'm i love savage and i love that they're doing a series i'm not sold on this point scheme i'm with jack bauer i like this percent of of winner thing uh i'd like to see yeah. it a little more technical but it's still it's all right i mean it does make for close matches and it makes this makes it so that uh mm-hmm. the series is never never out of out of reach yeah. um but you were out there with what, what would be described as an increasingly talented field Mm-hmm. like you're getting they're they're getting better i mean so i mean our podium was yourself sean roberts Ryland shadeg i mean that is a top-notch podium in any race and then you guys had nick Riker following you from there so i mean you're getting some talent there but it does drop off a little bit so i had this 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 question i want to set up for you because bethany <laughs> is you've never done a savage right beth I did one savage did in, one, did in, one Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. in Chicago. Yeah. So how do you sell someone like Bethany on making a savage series her her A race for like the next year? How do you make that become enticing to the elites? Because I mean nobody knows it better than you. Why not? <laughs> I was hoping for four DK. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess you you can look at it from 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 two different sides. Uh for for one, uh, it's it's enjoyable. It's a really fun community. It's a little bit different sense than what you're going to get at a um, I'd say a Spartan race. Um, and like I said, I don't believe the live feeds do it justice. You know, you, you we traditional like the Spartan National Series the live feeds always gave it justice because they're on mountains. So they do a panoramic view of the mountain. It's like, Oh my God, that's rugged. This one. No. So what you see isn't always what you're getting. And even when you look at the obstacle list itself, um, 
like when I was looking at the Georgia list, I'm like, oh, well, they're missing out some of the signature obstacles. And it seems like everything's spread out. Uh, but when you when you do a Savage, it comes at you quick. And there's a lot of – the obstacles aren't necessarily maybe as strength demanding as a Spartan obstacle would be. But they're tactical in a sense that you have to think about them. And it presents a challenge um, that – represents obstacle course racing more so than many of the other brands out there. So, you know, the enticing thing about doing one of the races, understand that the terrain is a lot harder and more challenging than it appears. And you're going to be challenged in a completely different way than you would in other race series. Um, and just because it's like a pretty bl blue and white color, all their branding and marketing, like doesn't, and, and like, <laughs> I'm not kidding like that. The way it's branded, I think, may turn off our traditional obstacle course racers in the United States because where did we come? We came from the Killington Beast, you know, Tahoe, and that's, you know, that's what we were attracted to. And, you know, blue and white doesn't look as intimidating as red and black. Um, so it doesn't have that toughness part of it. But it's a, it's a challenge unique to itself and, you know, represents actual obstacle course racing in a balanced way. Uh, bit of fitness that um you don't see in other races and you know to go back on the terrain you know they just put you through all, you know a lot of you're always going through water mud um very technical their their barbed wire crawls we had i think three or four this race um that were you know one of them was completely filled with water where you could barely get your head between carbon and you know, it's just something we don't see much of anymore so from just getting out and doing a race where they're competitive or open, it's, um, it's rewarding in that sense, you know, from the other side of it, the competition side, yeah, we're getting more competition, but I would argue the first two or three races last year, there was, um, a much higher level of competition than this year. Yeah. It wasn't the same names like Ryland wasn't there, but I, I think because, like Sean hasn't showed up and done really well at a Spartan race. He's done okay at OCR Worlds, but it's a mountain course. So I think people have kind of said, oh, you know, how good is he really? How good is the competition really? And that's what was really rewarding to see Ryland coming, whether people said he had an ankle injury or not. I mean, he was three and a half minutes back. You know, that's more than just, you know, a bum ankle. Um and the point is that the guys that are racing the Savage races are very skilled in that race. You know, it's a different type of racing. There's more variable. There's, you have to have a mix of running really fast and the technical running aspect. And the guys who run it are all extremely talented. And, you know, <laughs> the best ex example is, you know, Yuri Force. You know, even though he never had success in Spartan race, most of us went into Savage and it took me two years to beat him. It took Woods, I think, three years to really kind of start taking it to him. Um, and it's just, it's a different type of racing than Spartan races. And I think that's that has to be the start of every conversation. You can't compare apples to apples. Um, but it just be nice to see more and more competition come out. Because you're got one, you're going to be challenged. And I think that's why we come, we race, right? You know, and... Uh, you know, with everything kind of up in the air with, you know, Spartan race, it's just like, why not, not, why not come out and support a different brand and challenge yourself in a way that's not, um, that's not what you're used to. And to, to build on that, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people haven't been vocal about this national team that's forming in the United States. But if, you know, I've mentioned this a few times, but they've, uh, uh, you can get the most points for winning a Savage race or even come and placing in a Savage race, accumulate the points. And like, don't fool you to think like, I'm pretty sure why that's why Ryland was there. Um, you know, I know Sean was going after the points. Um, pretty sure Hosek is coming down to Florida for that, that very reason. Um, so <laughs> why do this? Because we, you know, I'm still not sold on the whole world OCR, but they're having a world championship in Europe and it represents what 
obstacle racing really is. And our federation recognizes that, oh, we're going to form a national team and send them to an obstacle course race. Well, people should probably qualify doing races that represent what they're going to do in a nat in a world championship. So, you know, I think it, it just lines up to, again, why not? You know, you, you put it that way and to put in, a, um, I'm, you know, sometimes I worry about offending people who really might do it anyway. Um, you take a guy to, to your point where Savage, they weigh, the USA OCR has weighed mm -hmm. Savage as a more comparable product, and that's why it's worth more points. Whereas, said, let's say you take a guy like uh, Robert Killian, who on a Spartan course is mm -hmm. deadly. He's a world champion. He's fantastic. He's especially in, his, in yeah. his prime was great. But put him on a Savage or a European course, and it's not going to be quite the same for him because he just doesn't have that obstacle acumen. You know, it's just not whether it's something he doesn't train as much or whatever the case may be, but that's just not his thing. So that's why they seem to have weighted the savages more in points. And it it just it just makes sense, really. Um you're so you say, like you say, you're not really officially involved in the USA OCR, but you've been a uh, you've been a supporter, you've been an advocate, especially since uh, this new startup. Um how is is it catching on? Is it becoming important to some of the elites to to be a part of that team USA? Is it getting a little bit of clout? I mean, I, I guess we'll we'll never know. Am I coming through, Claire? You're breaking up. Yep, sorry. you're fine. You're fine now. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, you know, we won't know until it goes through. And I just look at it like this. You know, we have there's a lot of opportunities presented to um all the athletes, you know, especially pre the whole COVID thing uh, with Spartan race, you know, they had, you know, a, a real big series, you know, and that was a road to regional championships and world championships. And it provided a lot of opportunities. Now, I mean, I think it's everybody kind of knows a lot of those sponsorship opportunities, one with Spartan and the sponsors with Spartan, they've been taken away. So, you know, I was listening to a really, uh, I forget, the tra it's a trail podcast, and they interviewed a um, um, a journalist, and they were talking about similar topics. Um, but the, everybody said, well, you don't need a sponsor of athletes. You don't need this and that. Well, guess what? If those athletes weren't sponsored originally, I don't think you, we wouldn't have an Atkins. We wouldn't have a Lindsay. We wouldn't have a Killian. These athletes wouldn't have dropped everything they're doing to find out what they're capable of. And, you know, people wouldn't have those role models to look up to. So those opportunities are gone. You know, look at a kid like Rylan, extremely talented. You know, he has, you know, everything in the makings to be, you know, potentially if presented the opportunity, you know, world-class, world-class athlete in the sport, but he doesn't have those opportunities right now because it's a different playing field. So without that sponsorship money coming in, you know, I look at, what do we have ahead of us? You know, I think you'd be silly to put your eggs in the Spartan basket. You know, they haven't, and I think they're slowly paying back athletes, but they've only diminished prize purses, taken away pro teams and sponsorships. So are you going to trust what they're going to do moving forward? You know, that's a wait and see proposal there. But with, you know, a national team, even though if I don't necessarily agree with what world OCR represents are doing they're putting on a world championship we have a federation in the united states headed by our ian hosick's involved with it and his wife who is an athlete who is advocating for the athletes and when you go and talk to a potential sponsor you know hey i'm a world championship spartan racer what the fuck is that you know you're not okay well will we'll we run you got to explain it hmm. if you present the opportunity to sponsor hey you know i'm working towards the national team or I'm on the United States national team this year. Um, and I'm going to re represent the United States and Belgium this year in a world championship. That's something a brand can get behind, you know, no, that that's a language they speak. You know, it's, it's, it goes beyond ambassadorship and, you know, your value, um, you know, whether as, as an influencer, as just a competitive athlete, it goes to you're representing your country and some, and, you know, in every brand, they want to support their country, you know, and this is how it is. So it seems to be an opportunity 
that it would be silly not to try to capitalize on right now. Maybe it doesn't pan out. We don't know. But we don't have a lot of directions or opportunities uh, in front of us right now. And I rather take the opportunity that I have more control of. You know, I can help build or dictate what our future looks like, what type of racing I want to see obstacle racing become, um, rather than sit and wait on a brand that has, you know, pulled our chain back and forth for six years now. Yeah, it it makes sense. And I mean, having Ian Hosek on that uh, involved with the USA OCR gives it such weight mm-hmm. as he is so well respected. Um, having yourself advocate for it, again, gives it a lot of weight and is well respected. And I'm something that I want to put in because, I mean, I've said it many times before on the show, I'm vice president of the Obstacle Sports Canada, so the Canadian equivalent mm-hmm. of USA OCR. And um, I want to put it out there because some people, I think, get confused. Like, they think... One, that the federations are race companies, which they're not. So mm-hmm. don't, don't get into that. And the other thing that I think has confused some people is um, the federations, yes, they will have a fee to be a member of the federation. I know that the USA OCR and I know the Canadian OCR are nonprofit organizations run completely by volunteers. So anything mm-hmm. that you pay into that, is going back to the athletes, going back to the program. doesn't mean you pay $40, I'm going to send Ryan Kemp for $40. That's not quite the way it works. But it goes <laughs> into helping create the programs. It goes into doing stuff like maybe getting uniforms, helping athletes get to races mm-hmm. who are part of the national team. We're not there yet. Team USA is not there yet. But mm-hmm. with, not even with, close. No, exactly. <laughs> but with support, like they got to build from somewhere. Go ahead, Ben. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I think uh, you guys there. Yeah. With uh, like growing up in the track world, I I just I feel like OCR is just kind of lagging it in this aspect too. Because, and again, when we race in track and cross country, every year you paid to Athletics Canada, and it was your membership fee. And then, in order to be considered, so you would race these national championships, you had to be part of like a member of Athletics Canada in order to be considered for um national teams and again it had nothing to do with any racing brand but the brands weren't necessarily the thing when it came to racing and um I just OCR that is still so brand specific um where it hasn't come together where there's like an overall governing body where we all pay in to be part of um like obstacle course racing USA or obstacle course racing Canada, you pay your membership fee and then you can race whatever race you want. And then ultimately you're racing for um, like an overall governing body. So it's just, it seems like it's taking a long time for us to kind of get to that place. So maybe these world championships that are happening where we're going to create national teams might help to get us there. But um, again, coming from that background, it's just, that's always made the most sense to me. So I think that's where obstacle course racing should go in this direction. Yeah, it should. And, you know, we've just been as as great as those opportunities were early on for all the athletes. Um, they're very distracting. You know, they took a took the athletes away from really advocating for themselves and um, kind of speaking up for their want, what they want. And I think for everybody to understand is, you know, paying our membership. It's not just about supporting the athletes on the national team. You know, that the federation, whether the USA or the or you guys in Canada, when you develop these federations and they have a voice and they have members behind them, um, that holds a lot of weight and they can go to uh, a savage race. And if, you know, there's something that seems unfair, you know, and they're not going to dictate to change, but they can have rather than us blasting them on social media they can have a a really good dialogue with these race brands to help shape, you know, what the sport needs, whether it's rules or our volunteers, referees, and and help create a more legitimate sport for every participant, you know, not just the top end athletes. You know, this is for anybody who wants to race, you know, elite or age group. Um, And it just gives us a little bit more advocacy and voice down the road. I mean, something you touched on there, which is very big to me, and this is like something I want to spearhead coming up in the future, is mm-hmm. a training program for judges, for the volunteers, for yeah. people to get. Because right now, in my mind, the biggest thing lacking in the sport to give it that legitimacy is consistent judging. 
is consistency. And we mm-hmm. saw it at Savage there. You cheated yeah. like mad. Nobody called you on it. No, I, it was, yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, yeah. no. I mean, you, you obviously know, did not cheat. You obviously you, you was a brand well, new option. Well, I mean, it is what it is. And what, ha- what happened with that was the tire went on. And just like, I, I guess, trained with Spartan Race with a spear throw, if you're at that last one, if it stays in before before you by the time you clear it, you go. So I turned and I thought I heard something. I looked back and it was all off and I was about to stop and go back. And they said, you're good. And I go, you sure? And they go, yeah. I'm like, all right, you said it, you know, and, yeah. the and by the way, that was, you know? that was clear as day on the video. That's, a, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. So, I mean, in jest, so, I say you but, cheated, but, but, but in need- the back end, I was really unhappy about that because you're, putting in an obstacle that there was a lot of variability with that. Two athletes can throw the same thing. One could bounce, one not, because the pole's not long enough. It, it, you know, it has nothing to do with the athlete's control. And so that's what we got together with the athletes. We had a conversation, drafted some recommendations, and just sent them our opinion. And, you know, I don't know if they're going to take that uh, with a grain of salt or not. But again, if we had a foreign federation, you know, that we can bring that to and they could discuss it with, you know, officials at whatever race brand it is, again, hold more weight of you now, Hey, maybe this ob- obstacle shouldn't be in here. It looks silly. It's not fair. The rules aren't laid out appropriately, you mm-hmm. know, and it just, it takes, I think the weight off the athletes. And, and one thing I've been, <laughs> I, there's always been way too much complaining in the sport and <clears throat> rightfully so, because a lot of, you know, honestly spartan hasn't done shit until everybody makes a big stick and stink about it on social media so you know having a group to advocate for the athletes and not be relying on just making ourselves look like a bunch of fools whining complaining on social media i think goes a long way in our sport as well yeah and and the other thing too that the federation can and like you say they can commentate commentate critique things like a sling ring as an obstacle for a competitive race mm-hmm. where, you know, maybe more testing need to be done. Quite frankly, I mean, as soon as I saw it, I thought this is a very fun obstacle for open waves. Great. They can yeah, have a fun. good time on it, but it probably does not belong in a competitive wave much like the, and I'm sorry, but the name slips me, but whatever that duck walk thing they've got going on. They, yeah. they didn't have that for us in Georgia. They didn't make us do it. So. Yes. And hopefully they, they don't. However, yeah. I did see, the um give and take and that looks spectacular that's something I'd it like does to i i hope they change it up a little bit um we were able to test it in uh in georgia great challenge but in georgia so gibbons is typically there's the the object and there's two chains coming off it and typically those two chains attach to one fixated point so it rotates um, which allows you to like swing they had the chains separated and attached at two fixed points on a bar, which didn't allow it. And I actually practiced it. Like it really cranked on my wrist mm-hmm. and it created a situation where you always ended up almost in a dead hang. Um, and I, I, you know, I don't know if they did it in thinking that being fixated, it might make it easier. So it doesn't twist and spin around. Um, but I found it uh, a lot harder. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking like, like a like a ridiculously a ridiculous hard like where there's no it it stopped the flow of the obstacle if that makes sense i'm thinking their logic is probably in the placement of the of the dowel into the saddle having it fixed yeah. like that would probably be the easier portion but okay. yeah like you said mm-hmm. if you're doing your straight arm monkey bar swing the torque on your wrist and your shoulder from trying to rotate your body is just yeah it's not, you're not going to get that smooth flowing swing, which uh, someone like mm-hmm. yourself is noted for you and BJ with that, that yeah. long reach and that smooth swing. And, and you know what it is? It's actually, so when you put the gibbon in there, you can swing on it, but it's when you're, so you got your, you get the ring on the, the anchors way in front of you. But by the time, because you're on one side and you swing around, your hand is completely torqued back this way. And it's actually, you can't swing back and get get it out and then swing along. So you end up, yeah, it's, I mean, it's it's good. I mean, I don't want to complain about it, but because they are doing new things, which is nice. 
And you know what? Right, wrong, and different. We said it before. Um, they're trying. They're being creative, and they're introducing yes. advancements. And that's, hey, man, sometimes you got to swing and miss to advance forward mm-hmm. because you learn. Okay, this doesn't work. How do we make it better? This does work, and you know you can't hit a home run every time. No, so I thought <laughs> Savage Race put yeah. these so they, you know, they- obstacles into open waves first. Mm-hmm. And then before they ever put them into elite waves, that's what I had heard. Yeah. They, and that's what they're doing, but you're still not getting, you're getting people practicing on them after a race, not in a race setting. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, yeah, I don't know how you go. I think you just have to, I think the only good way is to say, Hey, like in Georgia, I, I think the best route, they even they took some of our feedback, but I think they should have, reached out to us before and said, Hey guys, can you just stick around for like 10 minutes and give us like feedback while Lee's there, you know, and just l- let him know what, what you think or don't think, you know, but, yeah. but I mean, at least they are doing some testing. So, I mean, that's, that's good. Definitely. I believe not just with Savage, not just with Spartan, um, with the hybrid race stuff we talk about a lot too. There's not enough, consideration and communication among the athletes both high level and low level to bring in advancement so that they they can help progress the sport forward and say this is what we like Mm -hmm. this is what we don't like this is what works this is what doesn't work and that needs to be done and i do see savage doing a bit of that and it it makes me optimistic that they will continue to do so and maybe continue to step that up a bit um getting good representatives representatives like yourself helps a lot so all that said, does that mean for you, Belgium is uh, is a goal? It's in the works? Yeah. You know, I think, I, I, you know, I'm at an age where, you know, I'm not young, I'm not old. And um, I think being at OCR Worlds last year, uh, we had more of a European contingent over there. And um just talking to them, they all think I would love racing over there. I've never been over to Europe racing. I think it probably fits me pretty well. Um, so I, I think it makes sense to put that as as a pretty big goal for the year. You know, I love OCR Worlds, but they went and put their race starting at 10,000 feet this year. <laughs> it's like, um, for me, I'm not going to go out there for two weeks before. And to bank on that being my number one race this year um is just i think a a, a silly proposition i think there's just too much that could go wrong i mean that's i mean for people who don't understand you know tahoe starts at six thousand or something feet i think most of the time we went up to about 8500 i think one year we went up to nine and a half or something like that this this race in mammoth is from what the mountain looks like, it's going to start at 10,000 feet and go up to 12,000 feet. I mean, that's, um, if anybody skied in say Colorado and Breckenridge, that's their top peak there. I think it's like 12, five or something like that. Um, it, it's at a point where you're not just dealing with the uncomfortable feeling being an altitude. If you're not acclimated to that, I mean, you're going to lose, you know, five, to 10% of like your performance output for that day um, on one race, let alone busting your ass in a 3k and then having to come back the next day and, you know, recover for, you know, a, a 15k race. My big worry too is, and I mean, I guess it's this to some people is a great thing to some others. It's a bad, but that race is in October. Like mm-hmm. that's you the beginning want- of ski season. <laughs> well, no, it might be the end of ski season. I just heard on a ski report yesterday that they were expecting mammoths to be mammoths to be open till August. Oh my god! Yeah, like I just saw. I saw today they got like an avalanche. There's still maybe snow from this year. They, they saw pictures today. Yeah. They got an avalanche. The snow is up to the top bottom of the chairlift. Like like your feet would be dragging on the chairlift oh, yeah. in the snow. It's insane. It's, it's, I'm like that's just it's wacko. Like I know. We have we have Blue Mountain up here, and it happens in October with Spartan, and I, they've been so lucky so far. They haven't got hit yet, and I keep waiting for that one to get hit. And Mammoth yeah. is just like asking for it. You're going to need snowshoes. <laughs> Maybe just bring a sled and go down the hill on the sled. 
Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, man, I look looking at the year, you know, there's that, you're not sure. And, and even in, in, in that breath, you know, Big Bear for their 3K, you know, they've struggled with whether they're in the past, I think in October, but, you know, they, I, th- I don't know when, when that race is. I think it's in May or June or something. I um, think it's May. You know, I'm wondering if they, they may still have snow there for that. They may, who knows, they may not have that race. Um, they still have to be determined with their, I, I don't, I'm really confused about their series, but I don't know if it's to be determined on the 3K series in Mexico or the 3K Pan Am championships in Mexico. That's, um, but they don't have a venue for one of those yet. So it's, uh, seems like a lot, lot up in the air. Yeah, it is a little confusing. And right now, if you go to the Zen desk where it lists the four races for the elite series, and then you click on the one for Mexico, mm-hmm. not only is it not listed as a, as a, um, a venue yet, but they don't even have a date. Because in the Zen desk, it says yeah. in, in September, and then in the uh, <laughs> Spartan website, it says October. So it is very confusing. I'm I'm dis- disappointed, but still optimistic i'm hoping i'm trying to be positive i i think because i'm i like the 3k idea personally would have loved to see you do one i mean that would you know, sco- suit your skill set so well so i'm like i'll i'll, I'll do one uh, well i'm doing one or two good so. good well, awesome that's awesome i think i'm signed up for florida yeah i'm not sure um i'll i'll definitely be at the poconos one in pennsylvania because my cousins had graduation parties that weekend so go out on a Friday and go, go celebrate with him. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm just kind of wait and see with the three K. Um, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know how enjoyable it's going to be. I, I mean, I'm sure from the, from the perspective of hopefully like you, you're going to get a, a decent crowd there on a Friday night. Um, there should be a lot of energy um, I think think that part of it, and that that's great. Um, I, I just I don't know how enjoyable. Like I, you know, I don't see them putting us in technical terrain. It's all going to be on the open, and I just don't know how enjoyable doing, you know, rolling mud and a dunk wall three times and some monkey bars three times is going to be. Um, I mean, I'm sure it's going to be hard, a challenge, but, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm with you there. Sure. So we saw we saw what they did as a trial version down with the age groupers mm-hmm. down in Jacksonville. I did not want that course. I wanted the Spartan cross no. course that they did on Spartan games where they had like Twister, yeah. where they had better, where they had more technical obstacles and and it was less worried about getting muddy in 500 meter bar, bear crawls things like that i that's the that's the course i wanted mm-hmm. that's and i mean i've i've expressed that to spartan like don't like just make it a little more challenging yeah but you know there i think i heard steve say that um you know the same thing is like when you have uh when they have a super and a sprint at a venue the Herquois is going to be the weight of a sprint and you're not going to necessarily get like, if you had a super and a beast at a, at a venue, you're going to get beast obstacles potentially on a, on a super course. Um, but I'm pretty sure all these race, I know the Pennsylvania ones a super. I'm pretty sure big bears a super. Most of these races are super. So are they even going to have those obstacles even present at the venue to use? And, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, it's just just speculation so, yeah you know it, it'll be it'll be interesting man i know vj is going out to the first one but you know i i don't think we're gonna see atkins um you know maybe in pennsylvania who knows um you know i know without the the, the prize purses or you know people forget like even though some of these races, maybe the prize isn't that much different. You know, all these athletes that signed contracts with Spar and, you know, they're getting paid to go to the races, at least part of their, their travel. So you're not going to see, you're not going to see a Hawk call come out to Pennsylvania for a three K course Friday night, you know, and now most of these athletes are working full-time jobs. So to take realistically, you need to take Thursday afternoon off to fly in, you know, and Friday off of work. 
Um, yeah, so that, you know, they're not going to pay the athletes to go there and they're putting it on a day that they got to take off work. Um, I just don't have a lot of optimism that we're going to see a big contingent of athletes show up, unfortunately. No, realistically, you have to win to to break even. Essentially, for most people, like you say, two days off work, a flight or a mm -hmm. long drive, at least one night at a hotel, yeah. your you know top prize being fifteen hundred dollars, you're you're going to have to win to to financially make it happen. And I mean, let's say you you can come away ahead five hundred dollars. Well, it's the money's not there. Um, yeah, well, you know, it is what it is. Um, but I don't know if I agree with you about Pennsylvania because I've heard so many guys say they're going out to that one. I think that one is going to have a good which good one turnout. Uh, Poconos, Pennsylvania. Nice. Yeah, I've you know, who, like, sorry you broke up. For, who who's going out to that one? Well, I've heard obviously yourself, uh, all the guys from Race mm -hmm. Brain. They say they're going out to that one. Nice. Um, so there's nice. I think you're going to have a good field there, and that is uh, is that that's at Killington, correct? Isn't it? I believe so. Anyway, Poconos. Yeah, isn't that where Killington? Is no, 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 no. So th no. That's no, no, no. Killington's Vermont. So Poconos Vermont, is like uh, the Blue Mountain race. Blue Mountain. Where, that's it, it. In Pennsylvania, where they used to have the double, the double sandbag brutal carry. That that right. thing. Okay, so it just seems to be from people I've heard talking that okay. that one. I think you're going to get probably one of your best turnouts, which will be good to see. So. And you know, having yourself there adds to that, and uh, and hopefully, I I'm going to try to to get through one one qualifying round there on that one. So we'll see. It uh, I think it I think it'd be fun. I'm just I'm still I got to be a, a eternal optimist. I got to hang in there. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You know. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, that's fun. But come, if you guys want to race? Come come out to the Savage Race and see if you can beat Sean or I. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, Savage Race coming up in Florida again. Looks like it's having yeah, an even deeper be, field. Yeah, d different, different field. Um, you know, it's, uh, I think it's going to be a flatter course. I think Sean's going to, should probably be the favorite. He's, you know, that kid's got wheels for days um, and he's really explosive in obstacles. Um, so he's going to be hard to, hard, hard to contend with there. Um, the way the course is set up, um, there's quite a bit of running, but the literally all the obstacles I think are in the last half mile. Um, it's just a very large obstacle goblet. So you never, never know. Leon is always, you know, runs a steady race. I think he's coming off, you know, the injury and feeling better. And, you know, I, I think everybody could agree going through the obstacles. There's not, not, not many people faster than, than he is. And, that aren't going to slip up and make a mistake. So, you know, I'm sure he'll have a great race and who knows about Hosek. He hasn't really raced in a while. Um, Hosek always strikes me as so he's a I'm great runner, but not as much of an does, obstacle. You know, maybe guy. he comes out and whoops all of us. You know, you never know. I believe uh, Sean Stevens whale is heading down for that one too. Sean is? I think so. Florida. Yeah. Wait, 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 which rate? The Savage or the 3K you broke up? Oh, sorry. Um, I think that's the 3K. Sorry, now that I think about it. That's the 3K. Damn. Mm -hmm. We got to talk yeah, to Sean I would love to have him. Savage. Yeah, he's, he's, he, he, he's, really, he's pretty good at obstacles, right? Well, yeah, he teaches at a ninja gym. His obstacle acumen is severely underrated. Because everybody always talks about his ability to climb, right? Like he's a great climber, but mm -hmm. yeah, he can he can swing. He can get through obstacles really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I would love to see more people come out and you know kind of test themselves and see what they're uh, see what they're capable of. Um, you know, and I I don't know. I you know I'm not like a shit talker or anything, but I the only person who's beat me in two years is is Aaron uh new on the course and you know that was a cold day and my hands froze up so you know i'd, I'd love to see more people come out and, and and challenge us and you know i don't know try to come try to come prove that we're a bunch of schmucks out here and we're we're not good racers like <laughs> i mean maybe maybe we suck but you know until people start coming in and beating us i think um you know myself sean is sean's an excellent athlete on these on these races and 
you know, honestly, those guys uh, from New but Sanity, I don't know why they didn't show up to Georgia, but I think they may be in Maryland. You know, they have a group of guys, Ryan Brizzaro, and I'm sure they're yeah, you know, really Ryan. talented at obstacles. Yeah, you know, they're real fast. And you know, I think that's, you know, not to beat, beat on the drum too much, but, you know, I don't think everybody understands how fast some of these guys are that are racing. Like, Sean, Ryan Brizzaro, I mean, as far as pure running goes, I mean, they are, they're quick, you know, they, uh, they make me hurt. Um, you know, I just, like, like they're on those courses, they're really hard to be. And, you know, people haven't seen it because the only other races they've come out to are mountain races and everybody knows that's just a different type of fitness. So you know, they're, they're fast in their own right. And, and to be honest, you know, I think Woods got a, you know, a bad stick last year. You know, he, he was right in the mix fighting with me in uh, the Florida race and he slipped up on an obstacle and I think he let his confidence, you know, crush it. And then he was, he had a stomach thing going on for the Georgia race. And then he just was, and then his, his uh, wife was having some health issues. So yeah, I think he just got a bad stick, but you know, he was, he was a monster on those courses as well. Um, and you know, his, his fitness translated over to the other races. So it'd be great to see more people show up and at the end of the day, just, you know, you've had the rug pulled out on you and other brands, you know, why, why not come and support, you know, a group of, um, a company that is, you know, I told Matt Davis this, you know, we can complain about them all they want, but guess what? They've only taken steps forward each year. They've offered a little more money. They've offered, they've changed the structure of the series, added more obstacles. We've got more competition there. And they're not moving at the speed of light, but you know, they've done nothing but move forward. So, you know, I don't. I don't see why not come support them. Yeah, always been a fan of Savage. I don't think you can find anybody out there who goes, "I hate Savage." It's just, it's just not. Yeah, it's not in the cards. They just put on yeah. a quality product. M- maybe if cool. they don't get rid of the sling ring. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> hey, man, as long as they don't bring in the duck walk thing, you're, you're still. I'll take that sling ring over that duck walk. Uh, yeah, it's funny. I actually cut four blocks and started practicing, and I'm like, God damn! Like, what am I gonna have to do on this race? And it's actually, I'll give them credit. If we have to do it, it it actually burns your legs out and takes a good bit of coordination. So, you know, from challenging us with something new, we want more balance obstacles. I give them credit for that. And I'm not going to complain if we have to do it, but I'm also not going to defend us looking like pretty silly doing it. <laughs> if I ever have to commentate one of the Elite Savage races and they do that, I don't know how, I don't know what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> And look at Tenson Waddle. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I guess we compare it to what, uh, you know, I guess a bunch of high rocks athletes can come in because that's a big issue with the wall ball squatting low enough, right? They, <laughs> that's, that's right. That's, yeah. uh, the buckets. That, that's a thing, right? I, I yep, think I've yep. heard that. <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, I, one, one thing I want to hit on, um, something I've been thinking about um, and really mulling over and that's how I got to the, you know, trying to advocate for what they're doing with the USAOCR or whatnot and the national team is, you know, people um, even defending what they're doing in the 3k with Spartan. And like, I, I really don't understand why they took such a left turn because, you know, their MO has always been developing competition you know, and a path to get better and adding the age group, adding a, a North American championship and qualification standards to get to. And, and, and it's, and it drove masses to do the races. Right. And they could say it doesn't, it didn't work, whatnot. I, I just, I don't believe that because look at, I've been, I don't love the functional fitness thing, but look at why do people do DECA? It's accessible. Yes but they get a DECA mark. It's something to strive for. You know, the same thing with high, high rocks is big with the athletes right now. And they keep doing the damn races because they're trying to qualify. And now Spartan's trying to throw in this K and the qualifications to get to the world championship is just, I could walk on an open age group course on th- four races, whatever, and qualify to do the, the world championship. So that I don't understand what they, why 
or what they did because it's, it goes completely against what they've been building for like six or seven years now. Um, and it shows with Hyrox and Deca that that model is successful. So I get away from it. I think Spartan got the shit kicked out of it by COVID and is, and, and got desperate. And they're like, yeah, we got it. We got to do something. And then it's almost like they couldn't decide exactly what they wanted to do. And so they kind of go halfway. And I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, it's very easy for, yeah. for us to sit back and, and criticize. Sure. It's for us to sit back and criticize. It's but it it's it's tough in the same yeah. way. Sometimes it seems a little illogical, but, but it does. Uh, and that's I I don't mean to criticize. I think I just want to spur a conversation. You know, that's I think thank you guys for having me on because um I, I've been very hesitant to talk about anything in the past. I don't like the drama and controversy. It's just and the the anxiety that comes with social media. I try to stay out of it, but I I, I recognize to a point that I, I don't think I'm an important person, but I, I think as athletes, I think we need to do a better job of just, just voicing, um, just being vocal. I, w- I won't say voicing opinions, but just being vocal and discussing things in a kind of well-mannered and, and a debate form, you know, rather than whining. Man, if the sharp minds don't speak up, the dull ones make all the decisions. Yeah, well, don't let this dull mind make any decisions. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah. Um, all right, well, I think we've taken up enough of your time, Ryan. Um, Beth, you got anything for Ryan? No, thank Ryan. I really appreciate you coming on, and um, yeah, we're we're there with you, and we appreciate you again. Um, voicing your opinions and uh, everyone go out and try a savage race this year. We'll get out there if we can too. So yeah. all the best with your season, Ryan. And uh, we look forward to watching you this season. And Thanks guys. I appreciate it. I appreciate the platform. And, you know, that's um, the last thing I'll leave with you is that that really appreciate everything you're doing because I think people have strayed away from um, even interviewing a lot of the athletes Um we're talking about the sport. Some of the podcasts um, moved completely into functional fitness. Um, and I think uh, even things seem down. I think it's on us as uh, media in the sport and athletes and you know, advocates and fans, where we may be, is uh, try to try to keep it alive ourselves rather than relying on other people. You know, it's uh, we everybody's voice matters. Awesome. Thanks so much, Ryan.